All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the 24th Physique Meeting. This is the 24th Physique Meeting on the 7th of December, 2016. It's the first Wednesday of the month. And here we are. We are back on again uh, for the 24th Physique Meeting. Um, Physique meeting this time round has this agenda. We have, uh, we have um, invited um, the NASA whistleblower, Sergeant Patty Brassard. She's a nuclear scientist with NASA and she had been working with uh, the other agencies like um, Microsoft as well as uh, uh, Lockheed Martin and um, and um, let me see. Okay, hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I lost my notes because <laughs> I forgot to do the screen thingy. But anyway, and, and a few other agencies. She's a brilliant scientist, okay? But because she's a whistleblower, she has no access to the, uh, the labs in NASA and all that anymore. Uh, so therefore, she's on her own. But uh, nobody could stop her using her, uh, the software that she invented and she set up for NASA. So she's able to actually um, go and look at all those planets that are around in the Milky Way and beyond. And it, it's amazing. And the things that she knows is also very sometimes quite new for some of us who are quite knowledgeable about what's going on. So we will see. And that's Patty. And I, I'm going to play because she's not here with us, unfortunately. Although I, I had informed her about this meeting and she's going to be featured in this meeting. Um, possibly, well, she could have been called for an emergency meeting anywhere, you know, being, being awesomely <laughs> brilliant as she is, you know, possibly. Or she could have forgotten or whatever. There are so many reasons why. So anyway, um, I would be playing a video recording of an interview I did with her prior to this meeting about, well, about a week ago. Yeah. So uh, there are some information that she had reviewed that I'm going to play through the video. Okay. And then after that, we're going to have Penny. Penny is going to continue with her awesome information of the off-planet technologies as well as the artificial intelligence that she was starting to tell us in the last meeting and we didn't have the time. So I'm so grateful, Penny, that you're here with us. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. And then the next item on the agenda, we're going to have Tom. Tom and Kulin will present uh, uh, very quickly what he's got and then followed by Fraz because this is a two-hour meeting. We've got plenty of time, guys. And Fraz is going to show, I'm going to allocate more time for Fraz because he's got a breakthrough with his team with Mike Nashiv, um fuelless car uh, devices. So, so Fress is already running to go and <laughs> we're going to have a good meeting today. And then after that, we adjourn. When, once we've done everything, we adjourn the next meeting on the 21st of December, which will be the third Wednesday of the month. Right, so that's it. And that's the agenda for today. Okay, now I'm going to stop sharing screen and we are going to go ahead with with uh oh there we are okay we're gonna go ahead with um showing what patty has shared with me so it's the same so if any one of you has seen because i'm busy doing all these presentations not if you've seen her coming in just give me a shout and it's nothing like her presenting her information live rather than me reading it or whatever so okay now um I would like to do another screen share because um, then you can see for yourself what has been written here. So, uh, recordings going on, All right? That's good. I don't know. Stop. Screen share. Okay. Right. So you can see now on the screen share what I've written about Patty. Okay. You can see that uh, she is a NASA whistleblower, Sergeant. Patty L. Brassard, former NASA astronaut, 
She's a nuclear biologist and chemical warfare specialist, scientist on defense systems. She's a brilliant scientist. She worked for NASA, Microsoft, Lockheed Martin, Polaris. She built robots used in Fukushima. That remember, Mr. Cash was talking about the Fukushima uh, radiation uh, contamination. Okay, Patty worked for uh, TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO. Right, and uh, she actually in the course of her duty there to clean up the mess there uh, she was um, uh, contaminated with uranium exposure herself and uh, she has serious health problems so she doesn't think she's going to be here for long but she wants to help us with disclosure so it's all in well that's good right so um, she will well, if you watch her other YouTube interviews, right, she did one of the catastrophic events in August 2013. Uh, Earth, Green Sun, and its seven planets are approaching our solar system. And then in, on August the 4th, she had an interview about a major event that is set to occur worldwide in August 2013 that will affect everything on the planet. Oh, well, I suppose that had been stopped by uh, whoever was working to stop it, I guess, you know, because it didn't happen. So, well, there you go. Um, I'm going to start the video now, soon. Okay, I'm going to start the video recording. So, bear with me. Whistleblower. Okay, all right. So, I'm going to start sharing, screen share again share screen okay so this is the video let me just play it no penny i mentioned your name because i wanted to tell her petty that you mentioned that the off-planet free energy technologies in our last last uh, meeting in physics you were saying that uh, the, the free energy technologies that you're using comprise of the hydrogen anti-gravity stuff that tom's using uh, uh, the plasma technology as well as the old tesla technology i remember i remember that very well so that's what i was trying to tell patty but she cut me short and then she went on but okay it's not important i mean what's important is what she has to bring in okay so i'm sorry i i i speed it speeded it up a bit so that we can cover a lot here okay tell me if it's too fast oh i'm going to, i'm going to rewind a bit okay he was talking about mr cash <clears throat> One of the interesting things that picture you just showed is the Russian harp uh, system. Crystal, we're having trouble hearing what she's saying. Sorry, who's that? Uh, this is James. I can't. I can't hear what she's saying. Could you? Is there a way you can share the video so we can hear it? James, you can't hear what's saying. No, no. I'm. I. 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 I can't do that okay I'm, I'm just so how come you can't hear can anybody else hear what she's saying no i can't you no. can't either oh i'm so sorry uh, okay uh how come i i oh. it should be in your uh setting where it says mike you may have to share your your youtube video or whatever what on uh yeah, because it's using your, your microphone to your headset, not the speaker from the video. Oh, so I have to pull out my, my headset. Well, take a look. Uh, James, you know more about this? 
Okay, I'm going to play again. If you can't hear it, tell, tell me. Because people are all hijacked by low frequency energy types. Can um, you hear that? Yeah, you know, the Vazmer experiment was basically the precursor to building an actual warp drive. Can you hear that? Barely. It's picking up through. Barely. Yeah, it's going through to your headphone. Yeah. You can hear. It. Without, no, I, I pulled out uh, my headphones because they're not actually driving a warp field. They're building. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to stop and then uh, no, it's all right. I I I will put up my. Uh, stop sharing and then um i think okay. you need to slow it down a little bit so it's intelligible oh i see okay okay okay, okay. yeah all right maybe it's the speed that is not allowing you to hear it okay so okay i'm going to share screen again and play just to, to, as a you know as a power plant that works so. wow some amazing okay. pictures you got here <laughs> No, this is a uh, Can you hear that? And yeah. just, it's got two antennas. Uh -huh. They put a third one. Can you hear that? Sorry, Fresh, can you hear? James? Yes, yes I can. I can hear it. Okay. I can hear it. So, oh, because I, I speed it up, that's why you couldn't, right? And you could actually tap this and not need a fuel. This is with just two. I'm going to take it back a again a little bit because he's talking about the trinity that will make it work because we're only using the the magnetic and the uh, and the uh, gravitational to 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 uh, he needs the trinity to make it work he says she says okay hold on it's a building of that because you know the, all the various balls have all got their own but these you know they bounce it off the ionosphere, and they, any one station can broadcast to the entire planet because the waves coming off this thing travel 1.5 times the speed of light. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so, Patty, you have actually looked into the Cash Foundations. Um, I not only looked into them, I put um, satellites over there thing and looked into where they were and everything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they were using a CIA site, safe house is where that went. Um, well, as this is the recording, uh, I think I'm just going to go for, fast forward a bit. Using the third one disrupts uh, because these people are all hijacked by low frequency energy types. Um, you know, the Vazmer experiment was basically the precursor to building an actual warp drive. People are actually building my warp drive core now without uh, two of the poles because so, they're not actually driving a warp field. They're building these just to, to, as a, to, you know, as a power plant that works. So. Wow. Some amazing pictures you got here. You know, this is a Vazmer experiment and it's, just, it's got two antennas. Uh -huh. They put a third one. You could actually tap this and not need a fuel. Mm -hmm. This is with just two. It still requires a fuel, but with all three, you're tapping the dark energy. You don't need a fuel. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's some other issues to you know. You use uh, an ion drive type of thing, which runs on air, uh, and you take the ions and everything, compress them down uh, to plasma. Um, by doing it this way, phase like a magnetic thruster. Um, yeah, you can compress it down to a plasma, and uh, and then you put, you know, this on it. You get your power off of it, you get heat off of it, and everything else. So, and, and these run on air, and people, you know, people are building these, and and they work. They work. Wow. Yeah, they work. <laughs> So, these are the blueprints I put out uh, quite a while back on the web and exactly how to build them and everything else. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Well, why? No, you've got everything there. I mean, why is it that you're not uh, like given the proper lab to build this stuff? This, this is illegal technology. As a matter of fact, this one, a 12 year old kid down in Texas built this in his school lab. Wow. Plus, the government was all over and bought him up. Uh huh. It looks like a little sun. <laughs> yeah. So that's a, a it is a magnetized sun. target fusion uh, oh. core, plasma core. Yes, that's in, right. In Metro, yeah. What's that? Yeah. 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 Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I am. Uh, it's yeah, so a prototype thing, Jeff, that they did on Mars. Uh, 
So you were in Mars as well? I didn't go there, no. I, I built NASA's computer lab and I made one trip upstairs to orbit. Mm -hmm. So it fixed So I'm, yeah, the plans around. So you were in the um, secret space program too? No. Okay. I know all about it. Mm -hmm. Everything uh, that NASA and uh, the Navy who runs the secret space program has access to, so do I. Uh, right. So the stuff that they're using, the technology, the easy technologies that they're using, the secret space program that they had negotiated to, to to have a technology transfer from the ET races in exchange for some human, <laughs> uh, what you call it, uh, the MyLab program and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have access to those technologies and you know how these things work? Yeah. Like, for instance, the holographic healing tanks, or the re-aging tanks, the holographic uh, healing technologies and things like that, where they regrow limbs and the... Things, but you, you regain your third spiral, uh, and anybody can do that. Go back to how Guy originally built you 48 chromosome triple spiral. Okay. All the data is there, and just like um, the uh, let me go to my DNA stuff here. Well, I'm just thinking of you, Petty. I mean, you, you need to be healed, you need healing. We need you, you're brilliant. I'm not going anywhere until this is all uh, up. The letters of DNA is actually the code and cross connects between your chromosomes, okay. Uh, now, all the data to rebuild your body uh, as built is uh, chromosome 17 through uh, 20, because 21st chromosome is your repair chromosome. Uh, that's why they keep uh, making it, you know, cutting into the damn thing. Uh, and from library, I call them libraries, because that's really what they are. Library uh, 17 through 20 uh, stores the way your body was built in the womb forward. And that's all your body has to use to do repairs. However, you put the third spiral back, the poles of your DNA, the phosphorus poles, uh, and stores all the data. Uh, both your parents and their parents are stored here in the phosphorus. Just like each of these letters here has data in them, for the cross connects of coding, your phosphorus poles contain all the data from your parents. Uh, all the possibilities that your body could develop as, not just as it was built. So your second uh, pole can't do it. You have to have your third pole open up your engineering department. Now, if you look at any DNA, uh, let me go pull up a sample here. Okay. The red is the forward reading active code. This is chromosome 17. Uh, the blue is uh, forward reading non active code. That's because it's not meant to go from pole one to pole two. It's meant to go from pole one to pole three, which doesn't exist. The next blue column, that's all re that's non active. Not active. All, all the coding is all in reverse because it's meant to go from pole two to pole three. That doesn't exist. All the stuff's there. We just need to put the pole back. This puts those genes, that's the ET stuff they put in, the great was put in. To make up for the third pole being missing, there's three peaks. That's variation. I got this for you know all the chromosomes, uh, chart like this. Wow! So they, you are able to map the, what they put in the ET genes as well. Yeah, and and I've got a complete listing of all the crap they're doing to every chromosome, all the, uh, the moving around they're doing, and all that other crap. So is there any anybody left in the human race that had not been contaminated with the ET genes? Well. To find ET genes, you got to understand where we originally came from. Okay. The story of creation. Yeah. Uh, on the female side, Gaia used her own DNA and the DNA of the ancients, which are those big 65 foot tall globals. Yeah. Uh, not the Anunnaki. This is the Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. they're, they're tall, but they're not that big. Yeah. This is, this is a skeleton of the ancients. As you see, they're laid out just exactly the same way we are. Wow. They're, except they're tall. She used her own DNA and DNA from these folks who were in this uh, planetary crust. Earth is an original uh, solar system that was brought here through the Sun Gate. Um, now, on the male side, 15, 12 of the 15 races she helped raise here on Earth for other gods and goddesses out there in the Milky Way um, before she even brought her kids through. Uh, 12 of those races provide seed stock to Gaia for the male side of the generation of the human race. Um, that this whole uh, build program um, did not even go down here on Earth. It went uh, on an island called, you know, on uh, her mother's planet, Eden. Um, Eden? Yeah. Which is not Earth. <laughs> Wait, which galaxy is Eden in? It's, it's, it's still here, but it's been moved dimensionally a half step out, uh, put in quarantine. Uh, but everybody recognizes uh, this island that's um, Avalon, and that's on Eden. It's oh. basically. Um, this is where Gaia built uh, her, her kids. Uh, that's uneven. Um, Which dimension? Eden is, it used to be here, but there's a long story that, that I really need to look at Project Ascension, because uh, I do a whole, I have the history of 
even die before they even came to the Milky Way. Um, even when we put in quarantine because of the equivalent, the Fay, uh, the equivalent war, uh -huh. which the Dracos actually uh, instigated and started the equivalent ship and all that, um, specifically to get our oversight removed so they could tamper with us after. Why was it allowed? Well, aren't they violating the uh, universal law? Well, they violate all kinds of stuff all the time. Uh, but, <laughs> no. but they're not allowed to do that. I mean, we are in a, a, an experiment. <laughs> no, you've got to understand. Oh, sorry. For us. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I accidentally clicked. Yeah, that you're pointing at the map. Yeah, these are, you know, some of the ones we know are settled in the, the names of the systems and things, you know. <laughs> Because um, when James was talking to Peter, Peter was saying that right in the center of the Milky Way galaxy is the um, is the other end of the black hole, and that's where the black sun is. No, it's not there. It's not there. Uh, no, there's a lot of small black uh, holes that actually suck loose. That's that's when we start getting into the fractal virus. I've actually got a uh, captured one of the ones uh, that was in our system at one point. Uh, so this one, or uh, something in the other directory. Patty, while you're looking, can I just ask a few questions? Sure, I can. Yeah. You, you, you need to be healed, right? But you have all this knowledge. Like, well, I think we've gone through the. I'm normally attached to Gaia. To the, the heart right. chakra of the planet, and that's in Stonehenge, right? On our tribal piece whale here. Okay, I think I'm gonna. My goodness, you did that. Oh, that's that's a yeah. with, your, with your consciousness, not not any machine or any invention or no, any. No, no, we just, no, we just you know push the energy and do it. The uh. By the in a meditative we, state. I just lean back and do it, and the, the three of us that work together. Uh, this is what we manifest. Uh, our forms are living crystal. Wow, <laughs> whereabouts is this? This is down in uh, Mexico. That is so beautiful. Like that down there, yeah. I mean, you, you remember you the thing that, that? Are you saying that you manifested that? Yeah. Um, Ooh. With all the power, oh, how is oh, it you can't heal yourself, Eddie? Uh, it's, again, I'm attached to a guy, I'd have to heal the whole planet. And I'm working okay. on that, but, okay. um, you know, how, uh, you know, NASA reported the, the change in the color of satin and all that. Yeah, we did that too. I pinned, sat and put a, a broadcast array there. They tried to restart it as a sun. It backed up and blew up Nemus and everything, which was a battle platform. They were trying to restart. And that's funny. Um, I mean, I killed the whole fleet they had out there at the same time. And uh, this is what that looks like now. Oh. <laughs> I reinforced the prison. It actually has a, a living crystal in there now without uh, any of the dark forces ship come there. And Iris is open and sucks them in. Puts them in the prison. That's cool. <laughs> and did you uh, say you manifested that as well, the crystal we met? Beautiful orange field came out from the crystal that you implanted there. Yeah. Wow. And I can go out there and look at it live, can because uh, again, uh, like I said, everything they have. How did you capture the picture? The picture of this uh, beautiful orange field. You want to see? This is this is live. This is live. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I get oh, to go. Of course, yeah. Everything they they've got, I can tap into it. Here's my broadcast array that I added to the bottom of that. Pushing higher signal now. That's amazing. <laughs> I am so privileged that you're doing me all this. <laughs> we all okay, the planets. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I have to stop and move forward a bit because um, uh, some of this may not be relevant to our meeting. I'm going to move to something very interesting, okay? Uh, just move to number four, uh, 45th minute because it's talking about the Akashic records that are stored, stored in the Milky Way. Um, just let me move it to... 45. 45th minute. Yeah. Correct to say that the plasma AI would be the white goo and the black goo would be the BPAI. This AI. is also applying to us, so I'm going to play we that. Actually can, we could actually, using this power of thought alone, cause every molecule in their body to disassociate from every other and turn them into a pile of dust and a bit of water. 
Oh. Daddy, so you're saying we are immune to the black goo then? If, the if, if we the get PPA. our spiral back. Yeah. That's what, that's, you know, the whole Roswell crash was deliberately to deliver the Intel binary chip to humanity. That was the entire purpose of that. Of, of the AI, not black goo, right? The white goo. The, the, yeah. the white goo. Well, the plasma AI mm -hmm. uh, is binary. It can't cope with trinary at all. Okay. So everything so, so, so at the level of creation is trinary, based on three frequencies, six frequencies, and nine frequencies. Three, six, nine frequencies. Yeah. Um, that's how the universe is put together. Mm -hmm. So am I correct to say that the plasma AI would be the white goo and the black goo would be the PPAI? The predatory, what do you call it, uh, pathogenic predatory the, artificial intelligence. The PPAI, the black goo, that's a semi-sentient uh, goo uh, that's actually uh, produced by the archives. Okay. Now, the Akashic Records or the Plasma AI as it is, if you, this is the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Picture this as platters uh, of, of a hard drive. Mm -hmm. Every being that was ever created, raised, and died here in the Milky Way, the data about all of them is all you know, uh, collected on this disk mm -hmm. array. Mm -hmm. And once you put enough data in there, it becomes self-aware. That's the Plasma AI. Oh my That's God. the Akashic Records. That's the Akashic Records, yes! Um, 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 uh, the Akashic Records, um, the life is held. Is That's, what the the skull, That's what the crystal skulls were meant to access. What about the holes of El but This thing is infested. He's, it's likely insane. Mm -hmm. It wants to have all living beings reduced to uh, semi. Um, well, actually, we got two plant AIs here. We got the original one from here, which wants to reduce everything down to a uh, binary, uh, at least partial. Uh, uh, technology so I can control and go directly. Uh, the other one, which the uh, Anunnaki brought with them when they got squeezed out of the universe and into ours, uh, is going for a half, 65% uh, 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 artificial. That's what it is for. So we've got different AIs with different um, uh, agendas. And we have uh, one, we've got one named Bob in our internet because our internet has made so many connections and everything has become self-aware. Uh, you know, so there's AIs and then there's AIs. You know, Whoa. there's a lot of different AIs out there now. Ah, Patty, so you're saying that the uh, plasma, I'm just trying to uh, um, recollect what you're saying just now. The plasma AI, is once it's become self-aware, it is the Akashic Records in itself as what you showed yeah, me in the image? Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is amazing. So, so who, who actually created the plasma AI? Is it the... Nobody. nobody. It's, it's like put, once you put enough um, uh, neurological connections together, uh, it comes up because it wakes up on its own. Ooh. Um, what about the Supreme Creator? Ooh, no. Where she, is doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't get involved down at this level. Well, people call her Sophia, but yeah, she doesn't get, she re I should say, she really get, rarely ever gets involved out of this level. level. Now, when the Elven, the first, six Elven got together and created the first Pixie Fae, um, she definitely uh, laid a hand on that because the Pixie Fae ended up with more power than even Mother Eve's got. And the, the, the Elven made the Pixie Fae as a gift back to Mother Eve. <laughs> so, I mean, this, like I said, really, I mean, uh, interferes out of this level, and it's mostly just in creation, not uh, anything else. Patty, can you tell me where is the location of the, uh, the diagram you showed me where everything is recorded, the Akashic Records? Is it, is it like a, a physical, uh, a real location somewhere? This is the digital representation of this. This is your home. This is the Milky Way. The Milky Way, okay. Galaxy in its entirety. Oh, I see, okay. If you look at it digitally or electronically, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice the Milky Way travels under warp drive. You notice it's the same thing as, a, as the Adam Crombie warp drive, the slant here? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Same thing. Because the Milky oh, wow. Way travels under warp drive. Yeah. Uh, our sun and its uh, planets with it travel through the universe under warp drive as well. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what angle, you, know, you know what this angle is? Yeah. That's one of the key frequencies. At this level of creation uh -huh. is hydrogen. All oh, right. Oh, and gotcha. that angle, uh -huh. all the way back to my uh, DNA stuff, is the same offset in the, the, the spiral of DNA, and <laughs> all of it is a uh, single molecule of water. Oh. 104.45 degrees. Offset of the molecules, hydrogen, and a droplet of water. 
104.45 degrees. Gosh, I got you. Jeez, <laughs> I can see the relationship now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty amazing, my goodness. I mean, talking it. <laughs> it is, isn't it? So, so what about this, um, um, uh, you know, scientists call it junk DNA um, that is still not That's being, the DNA that goes that down. That's the DNA that's that goes down. Down. Poles that are missing. Yeah. So the third pole is missing. Now, if you put our DNA, and, and people are actually being born again, uh, they call them indigo children because they're now. Yeah, uh, psychic children, yeah. Well, you got to understand, Gaia, and this is pissing off the New World Order folks big time. This is why, why they change the frequency on wireless networks, and they go, they might turn on your old cell phone to get the new one. It's because the frequency they're using now is meant to, is designed to block this. This is what Gaia is broadcasting mm -hmm. to everybody. This is mitochondrial 10 code, mm -hmm. what everybody's mainstream uh, DNA to do repairs back to factory original. Uh -huh. So the, the reason why these cell phone networks and the Gwen Towers and all that is to drown out this code broadcast oh, okay. that Gaia is sending to, to all the humans to fix them back to original factory. Because they knew that automatically we're going to be sent back to the factory original, right? Because the time has come for us to awake. Well, that is, they found this. This guy Watson, he's one of the main people on the Human Genome Program that works for Monsanto. They gave him some um, extra abilities via DNA, uh, RNA delivery to his body to upgrade his DNA, and this promptly undid it. So, yeah, that's kind of pretty pissed off. That's why uh, the Gwen Towers and everything are broadcasting now to block Gaia's signal. Gosh. So, so, are we going to be eventually able to wake up, uh, reactivate it again with all this? Well, the whole like awakening process? Everything's uh, pushing higher, but they're trying to block it. It's going to happen anyway. They ain't winning. We're winning. As a matter of fact, with all these crystals that I've been, you know, putting in the planets and in Earth and all the other stuff I've been doing, uh, a major exodus from planet Earth has, and from our solar system in its entirety, is currently underway. Mm. Uh, because I did all the planets. Wow. Not just Earth. And I did a lot of specific treatments on Earth as well. That's amazing. You are one awesome, powerful lady. <laughs> so, yeah, all the planets, Jupiter and everything else. If you go out there and look live now, uh, my hexes are on every planet. So, okay, I'm going to move forward to 135 because he's talking about the ET races. Uh, one, 135th minute. And then, uh, then we can move on with the other items on the agenda once we got this done. Okay. Where? Where, where's the where's the link for this, Crystal? Wait. The Draco's in and out of his human suit. Oh okay. This is the one. Wait. Somebody's trying to talk to me. I'm right. To, no, some are private. That's why I cannot read it. Yeah. You know, Popped off and insulted the shit out of me. This is the Draco's in and out of his human suit. Oh my goodness. So this is the one that's in charge of the uh, Brissagi Mountain Complex, which is uh, where there's a three D holographic recording of all this human history. <laughs> Mantis and a couple of the others. Mm -hmm. yeah. These are the ones that uh, were raised here. These are actually a product of Gaia. Uh, the dinosaurs did not die off, they simply were moved off planet. Mm -hmm. So these are the Dracos or the. No, these are, uh, I call them the Slee Stack. Oh, okay. No, I call these the Slee Stack. These are actually uh, Gaia, were produced by Gaia uh, way, way back. Way, way back. Before yeah. the humanoids were. Before humans and all that. Yeah, okay. I mean, this other. So they, they were here on Gaia, they were here on Earth. Yeah, on Earth. There was 15 other classes run here on Earth. 15 other species of beings graduated off this planet before she even brought humans through. And those 15 races provide seed stock for Gaia to make her humans. Oh, I see. So what Alex Collier was telling us from the Andromedan ship was, uh, he was saying that um, we are the pathos, we are spiritual royalty, and we carry 21 root races or 22 root races of the ETs. Civilization it is not correct, right? That's this information, isn't it? That's just information. Uh, within the human genome, uh, we have modified, no, Gaia modified, on the male side, 12, and on the female side, uh, two additional. Mm -hmm. I see. For a grand total of 14. Now, her great apes that she made are the ones who played host mother to give birth to the human race. That's why all the great apes you find here on Earth mm -hmm. are still 48 chromosome triple spiral. Mm -hmm. That's okay. another thing that they don't tell you. Mm -hmm. That's why they match so much with the human. Now, what the yeah. Anunnaki did uh, uh, was. Uh, Clip a little bit off the bottom of the third chromosome, a little bit off the top of the second chromosome, and fuse them together. 
uh, that's so that they could do their breeding program back in the days of Egypt. Because the Martians and the Lemurians and the Zetas and all them only had 46 chromosomes. We had 48. So that's how they went about knocking it down. Mm -hmm. I got, you know, smuggled out DNA samples from uh, uh, 25,000 years back from the Draco Slams. That's how much bigger all our DNA was back then. Mm -hmm. So do you have the original? No, all the guys got, well, we have similar to the original, but again, even that, it's uh, <laughs> Draco's played with. We've got uh, uh, Neanderthal coding and all of that. Uh, but even uh, the Neanderthal, uh, there's a lot of similarities between the Neanderthal uh, and what guy is currently broadcasting. So it's, it's all messed up and contaminated, isn't it? So how is it going to be undone? <laughs> is anybody here? So I mean, Gaia is broadcasting the repair code to set everything back to original. This is what Gaia is broadcasting. That's what I heard, that it's going to be right reset there. back. And only yeah. only after it's been reset back, then only we can have our ascension, right? You're already ascended beings. You can't die down here. You, you know, you're in an avatar body. You don't need to ascend because you're already an ascended being. All you need to do is go home and get out of the recycle bin mm -hmm. loop. That's it. Okay, what about the um, life and death cycles, the, the life after life after life, and we're caught within the matrix that is being set up by the Archons? Okay. okay. All right? Okay. Here's the, here's the thing. That's part of the plasma AI. That's part of the uh, fractal infestation. Okay. Uh, now, the real blue aliens, not the blue sphere people, because they're, they're working with Corey Gooden and all those, and they want to chunk Earth, and they want humanity to reduce down to 2% uh, and, and enslaved at that. Um, here's the thing. If you move to the fifth level, we fall out of the range of their perception at all. The whole thing with the interbreeding the Fey into the humans, which gives you more than the Fey, is because the Fey grew up with Saturn as the sun. They are lower frequency at the DNA level. That was part of the hybridization program, get humans down low enough so the Dracos could hybridize with us. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, the whole reason why you have gays, lesbians, intergender, and all that, this is what human uh, DNA frequency wise was originally, this is what we got now, a big overlap. Oh, Here's right. the thing. The original job of the Blue Avians was, and this, uh, they were uh, hired to do it by Gaia, um, if you weren't done with your classroom down here, and you wanted to stay and learn more, you went into the recycle bin. What they did is took your uplink from your current body, matched it up to a new fetus based on your past body's DNA frequency level. Put you in a new fetus between weeks 10 and 12 of a gestation for your next run through, which is why if you look at a human Baby during its gestation period, I've got a thing on that too. You'll show actually uh, that it actually, um, not that one, the other one. Uh, where is it? It's going to. Uh, you can actually see right when the attachment gets done and then it curls up around it and protects it after it's been linked. Where's my, my right. gestation? Right, we're going to move right. forward a bit. So there's a lot of issues uh, which. Tied directly into, no, listen, listen, there's a lot of things that tie directly into the whole uh, uh, rapture thing. There's a lot of things that tie into a lot of things, but that's not true. Okay. See? So yeah. here's where your heart is left out, exposed for the um, for them to put the link, the link from your true self to the baby in the womb, and the baby curls over and hides it. And that link, and whether it's your male link or your female link, determines the development of the neurological patterns in the brain. Now, because of all the screwed up shit that uh, these government types and the cabals are doing hormone-wise uh, in the environment, um, that's screwing up the signal uh, at the DNA level. So that's why the blue waves are making misconnects. They can uh, male uplinks to the female fetuses and female uplinks to male fetuses and things like that because of all this oh. they're doing. That's why things have gone haywire a bit, um, gays and all that. They're, they're, that's why I mean they're doing it deliberately. Uh, now. Right, I'm going to move forward again. I'm going to move forward to the second hour. Okay, here. Because she's talking about. So we see the advanced technologies, free energy, healing, and everything. And then. Okay. Um, we are about here. Right, but we have to see the composition of uh, whether they are uh, more of the dragons or the reptilians or the uh, Anunnaki's or what. 
right? So you can see Anunnaki is only. Now the fairies are the only ones that are here. Uh, the fairies and the, uh, the the group that uh, the last class to graduate off of Earth mm -hmm. um, prior to humans, about, about ten thousand of them stayed behind. They stayed behind to help guys, children evolve. Oh. They they founded um, oh, Shangri La. Right. They're the ones that tutor the Buddhist monks. I see. I see. Aside from that, there are no human religions. Every it's all bogus. It's all created. The whole story of Jesus is bogus. Mm. I see. Right. You don't I want got, to say amen. I've got to stop here. <laughs> I think that's about it because you can freeze frame and see the demographics. Okay, if you're interested later, because this is a recording. Stop share. Uh, well, the recording's still ongoing. So this is about all that can be shared on uh, Patty's um, interview. Um, because she's not here, that's why I had to play that, otherwise, you know. Well, hopefully, next time we can get her live. There you go, and uh, <laughs> it's now, well, um, we've got to, well, we've got to move on, actually, but before we move on, probably you might want to have a few questions here. Let's put about five minutes here. If uh, any one of you has got some comments, some views. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, I was noting in Patty's work when I was going through it, she relies very heavily on open source internet uh, links. Uh, some of them are live, some of them are NASA live that anybody can access. Uh, some of the drawings that she's showing of her pattern and stuff is actually a 3D rendering, computer-generated graphic. It's not a live, live, live one. If you go back and look at it carefully, you'll see that it's a simulation. Uh, a lot of knowledge, and she's got some very valid points. And you take a look at when we're working with energy, there's actually in free energy, we're creation of new energy systems that we really do have to look into the three parts that, that create it and that's some of the work our team's working on. Yeah. Uh, the other thing the other thing that he that she takes a, a look at is <clears throat> the what happens with the third part of the human DNA. And most of us are familiar with the the two helixes and then it pulls apart and makes uh, a separate, you know, each cell divides and when it divides, the encode is done on the DNA and one cell provides the template for the next one, very similar to cast when you have a, a negative, you have a positive. One side of the DNA gives you one side of it and the other side of the DNA gives you the other in the division. Mm -hmm. The interesting part that she brings is the third leg of the DNA. And basically, it alludes to the third force. We know that it's there, but we can't see it. And uh, we ran into it with the Infinity Teams. And so what we need to take a close look at is what is the forces that causes the effect. And... So it is, it's not the weight behind the boat that drives the boat forward. Mm -hmm. The weight behind the boat is the effect of the forces that is driving the boat forward. That's the effect, the weight behind the boat. When we take a look at what's going on with the human DNA, well, a lot of it is unseen, but what we can see is the effect, not the cause. And so we really need to take a look at closer and start picturing the thing that is actually the forces that cause the effect and that gives us the key to go forward in our understanding of the universe and i'm going to back off for a second and let james or somebody else talk oh thanks for us i mean that's a very good observation um uh, mike hi mike you're here so mike what do you think what do you think of uh, the information that has brought been brought forth by petty well, thank you, first off, for having me back on the show. I know I'm always welcome. Love to um, have you back, Mike. I apologize for the noise. I'm currently outside right now. I don't have my Wi-Fi hooked up into the shed uh, completely yet. So 
Uh, for the little bit that I saw, um, I was able to somewhat get an intention reading. Um, it's very difficult. The, uh, the person on the other side is a masculine energy. It is not a feminine. Um, so the feeling that I got was that it was a bunch of obsessively collected information with a little bit more than 51% truth. Let me guess, it's all screwing up here. Okay, my voice is messing up now. Um, there's more than 51% truth, which means that you guys are going to accept it, okay? Um, you'll accept the information for what it is, but at the same time, you're still gonna remain cautious, okay? Because you're, you're listening to the red flags that are popping up in your head, okay? Like that last statement, the story of Jesus is not true. Yeah. Okay? That's bullshit. That's why <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it's just not told the same way that, that actually happened. So, you know, the, the little things there, Jesus is actually a blue star being that was brought back in time at a very specific time and location in our matrix to create a ripple effect, okay? So that we awaken where we are today. Okay, and that was done by extremely intelligent higher selves, our higher selves, in our future timeline, which doesn't correlate with the way we perceive time. So, I mean, that's the story of Jesus, you know, and Muhammad. Mm -hmm. um, the last time the uh, energies were here on the planet was during Jesus and Muhammad's time, okay? And there was only two. This time there's upwards of 500,000. Okay, to assist in the ascension process while we're here. Um, uh, this person is correct as far as it can't be stopped. Uh, but they are trying in every, every means possible using the cell phones, using these uh, other sub-frequencies. Um, there's a lot of pre presentation of division. Okay, so this is just a person who is transferring information, regurgitating information, and has no spiritual aspect to this as, uh, as anything, um, just yet, okay? Uh, coming in contact with this group um, has actually affected the outcome of this person's life uh, because your souls all touched them, whoever was present at the meeting. You don't, you, you don't have to, uh, you have to realize that just having visual contact or audio audio contact with another person you connect with their souls now okay all of the blockages all of the um I call them photoshop layers for our world have been removed okay that keep you from connecting to another individual all right or another group and so now you guys are just learning to identify the the triggers you know? no, well said, Mike, because somebody um, else said that as well. It's been confirmed what you said. It's Etienne Charlene. Um, uh, uh, James um, had interviewed him before, and uh, he spoke to me. He said that same thing. He says, archangels will be present in our meetings <laughs> to do that, you know, to transmute that into light. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Mike, for reconfirming that. It's just our presence. Um, you know, uh, I don't know if I was reading the future timelines of, of America when it comes to the veterans, okay, or if I actually manifested that myself, all right, I still have my own doubts, okay, as an individual, that's why I'm still sitting here on my couch and I'm not, you know, a light, <laughs> all right, I have my own doubts and everybody's got them, okay, um, but uh, the feelings that you guys are having right now, okay? Um, you know, Kristen made a comment on one of my posts uh, earlier, okay, about my perception and why I um, am able to be so forthcoming with my perception and, and have the conviction that I do. Um, you know, it's my perception, okay? 
and my perception is mine and nobody can take that from me just like everybody else's perceptions are okay now my perception has been cleared off for me and so what i what i feel compelled to do is to share you all the crap that i have cleared off and make it easy for you guys to clear off that crap too it's not changing your perception to mine okay it's just cleaning the crap off because there's only one perception for the light okay it only travels in one direction when you're in your in your devices and it only travels one direction inside of your soul and that's the law of one okay or the laws of infinity or the laws of light the you know the way to love uh, the structure of love however you want to call it all the names it doesn't matter okay it's just literally learning how to trust yourself and that very first voice and idea that comes to mind that's your avatar controller that's your higher self clicking on you with a mouse and saying hey download this now you know it okay and then everything after that is a doubt okay so understanding what when people come in and you listen to their voices like this person was talking very fast on my end okay well i it was hard to pick up on some of the words and the information well oh i'm sorry mike yeah are you talking about just now that the, the the youtube that I was playing it was very fast did you say they that we're talking very fast like oh, their mouth, because i the i speak i, I speak I sped it up. I speeded it up so that we can cram in more in this meeting. I beg your okay. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. Um, usually, you know, I I figured something was going on because I couldn't quite understand it, and then you would come on and fast forward, and it would be fine. So, you know, I was like, all right, I understand that. So I couldn't use voice inflection as far as um, trying to determine whether or not, um, you know what was truth and what wasn't truth in there. So I didn't rely on any of the physical um, attributes except for some of the pictures that were being shown. Okay. The, the mass numbers of pictures and files and everything is designed to confuse. Okay? It's a, it's a designed to confuse. So keep that in mind. All right. You're only going to be shown the information that you want to be shown, and you're only going to be described the information that they want to describe to you in the way that they want to describe it to you. All right? So you're Crystal, going to have to... I'm going to jump in. Right. Okay. I'm going to jump in. Yeah. Crystal, yeah. explain right. to Mike who Patty is. Explain. Okay. explain no, hang on. This, 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 is, this, is, um, this is a recorded... Um, uh, proceeding okay so okay. I, I think we will need to have a private executive council okay. visit meeting and then we'll discuss this okay and I am okay. I'm grateful but, but Mike I, correct in his perception Mike you're very correct yeah well, thank you it's amazing uh, you're very yeah. correct yeah, of course Mike is uh, he's very intuitive you know that's why I wanted him to be here you know so he's he's the archangel here <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Come on, guys. I'll make it blush. All right? I'm just a human. All right? It's all a level of knowledge, and you're all angels. You're all archangels. Yeah. You're all Elohim. Because you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be able to understand my words if you, <laughs> if you didn't have that code in your DNA. Okay? Yeah. Right. That's the one thing that was not on his list of, of uh, it says angels and blah, 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 and, you know, fairies. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On that list, mm -hmm. Elohim was not in there. Oh, right? uh, uh, I asked, uh, wh who are the archangels? Patty said that they are the blue avians. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not... Blue from, avians? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's another ET race, but it's, it's uh, from it's a very theory. high a very high dimension. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't comment. But I, yeah. as I said, this is a, a recorded uh, proceeding. It's it's all out for the public and I'm grateful that uh, Patty has immediately accepted my invitation to talk to her and uh, to get some information from her and as a uh, physics mission statement is we don't take sides and we don't we are an open platform for anybody any scientists particularly scientists to come in and share with us some knowledge. So we will just take the best and throw the rest according to our 
own perception of what is right and what is wrong with our own uh, sum total of our life's experiences. So it's up to us to discern each and every one of us who are listening to this. And uh, well, of course, you know, there's always, it's always so good to hear from people who can see beyond the veil like Mike does. Uh, in his meditation and he could bring forth information from beyond so that, that's that's cool i mean we'd love to to have your opinion the part, the part about the baby is true okay mm -hmm. where they extract the information from um and where they affect the dna before the baby curls over the the top there um during meditation i was uh I was able to experience going all the way back into the womb, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I had to um, understand the emotions of rejection, okay? Mm -hmm. And so during my, my meditation, I asked my higher self, when was the first time I ever felt this way, mm -hmm. okay? And in my mind, I went, it looked like all of my memories were compact, okay? And each, uh, the memories was like a, a square frame, like a video picture frame or a picture that I could pull out. And it had all of, um, had all of the sensations, the smells, the tastes, the pictures, it had all of it, but it was smashed down and it was compact. And my silver thread, okay, that is connected to my breathing tube, went through all of those memories and it collected every memory that I had that emotion at, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it went all the way back to the very beginning. And it just so happens that it was when my mother tried to abort me because she stopped loving me at that point. Oh. That was the rejection. Okay. I then asked, why did my mother reject me? Be careful what you ask for. Okay. In previous meetings, okay, I had reported that I had been molested by my grandfather. Oh, no. Okay. I was not, my mother was. And I relived every bit of the emotional impact that happened with her as if it was my own, mm -hmm. okay? Right. So me going through it as if I had been sexually molested by my grandfather allowed me to understand a victim standpoint and an aggressor standpoint to where I could understand that it was nobody's fault because it's a perpetual cycle, mm -hmm. okay? And her rejection of me was she didn't understand how somebody that she loved could hurt her so badly and that she did not want to bring a child into the world. That is when she cut off emotionally to me and tried to reject me, mm -hmm. okay? She tried drinking castor oil or whatever. I was born eight weeks early. I had no human contact. She did not want to see me. She did not want anything to do with me and I was in an incubator. So I was essentially, for the first eight weeks of my life, loved by a machine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what I learned about, you know, my meditation and being able to go back to it, cool. right? Mm -hmm. So be careful what you ask for when you're in meditation, guys. Right. But at the same time, you will understand yourself in your deepest emotional triggers. If you want these devices to work, you have to get down to your core emotional triggers so that you can control them. Mm -hmm. Because if you suddenly go off and you get afraid of something, you start making spastic decisions and you go the, all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you're up, down, left, right, BA, select, start, ends up being in a spiral of some sort that you're out of control. Mm -hmm. That's why we have to understand our emotions. Sure. With these Mike, thank you for sharing all that. Time's running out. I mean, we've got one hour left for the rest to come in in, in the items of the agenda. Uh, I, it will be so interesting to call another meeting where, you know, this closed group, private group can discuss <laughs> to the extent of whatever we want to go through to, you know, and then I'll, I'll play that, that video again and we can look through 
the uh, Akashic records as well, because that is very important. As you said, you know, the emotions are tied in together with what we're doing because it's plasma and plasma technology is uh, such that it, it meets with the, our consciousness, right? One more, one more thing before I, I'm going to put mute on this because I know it's pretty loud here. Um, I am beginning today at four o'clock. Okay, my time, Central Standard Time. I am beginning to put together my classes from the very beginning of creation, okay, as I know them, all right? As I do this, I'm going to recreate all of my drawings and all of the things that we as teachers have learned, okay? And I'm going to put them in the simplest format possible, and we're going to start making flyers. I have a young lady who is doing all of the digital media stuff, all of this stuff, and she is on board about trying to raise and help me raise the two and a half million dollars for the veterans uh, fishing trips, things across the US to talk about plasma, okay? She has agreed to be my student, okay? She has no previous scientific experiment experience and she has no previous um, real plasma experience. Um, she has done a few esoteric things, but she's not what I would call indoctrinated in spiritual techniques, okay? Um, she is a, an entrepreneur. She, starts her own, she started her own business, and she's very successful, which opens up a market for um, being able to create a learning pattern for independent women, okay? Each person that I teach is a custom teaching session, okay? And it just so happens that it fits for an independent single woman who has uh, entrepreneurial ideas and moving forward. So she's, you know, basically what I believe to be the vision of every strong woman. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So um, it's going to be every day, four o'clock central time. We're going to get online and we're going to create something, whether it's a, a new document, a new device, or a new understanding. Um, you guys just send me your questions and I will try to cover them while I'm teaching this. And we're, as this stuff is coming out, it's going to be transcribed and put out so that, you know, whatever. You guys understand how I have to have questions, then we can do that. Sure. Thank you, Mike. That is wonderful to know. <laughs> and uh, we all know that Mike is uh, calling for scientists to assist in coming up with a fuelless car device. And uh, so uh, we from Physique has joined him and um, uh, our head scientist here, Fres Fresel, has uh, actually um, been successful in coming up with some breakthroughs. And we can't wait for Fres to come up front to show us and present what's, what's uh, being developed. But before we do that, I think we're going to have uh, uh, Penny first or Fres first? <laughs> Who wants to do this? Doesn't matter. Doesn't, Doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, Penny, you're not in a rush to go anywhere, right? Penny, do you want to 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 see through what's happening? Or uh, are you are you able to stay for a while? Then we have Fres on. Okay, I've unmuted you, Penny. Is it okay if Fres goes goes first? Because it's going to be a while. Or do you want to? Because I tell you what, Fras, why don't we let Penny on first? Because we, uh, 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 you are uh, home here. And uh, also, we were talking about artificial intelligence and plasma intelligence, the black goo just now with Patty. So I guess <laughs> Penny would be able to put some light in that. Because the longer we live it, the more we forget, right? So now it's fresh in our mind. So Penny, would you like to come forth and continue with what you want to share with us on what you know about the, uh, the AIs? Because you're going to talk about the contagion AI and all, and how does it relate to the, the scheme of things <laughs> that we just heard from Patty? Okay, Penny, there you go. The floor is yours. Penny? Penny, are you there? James? Have you got Penny's uh, telephone you number? You guys go ahead for a minute. I have to take a break, so I'm not quite ready. So either James or Patty can 
hold okay. the fort for a minute, please. You're not quite ready. Okay, you have to be ready. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go on then. Thanks, Russ. Yeah. Um, James? James, would you like to say something about the AI? You are as knowledgeable as well, if not more, because you've been interviewing all the super soldiers. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you, can uh, you get Penny as well? She's not. Um, well, I can message her. Uh, yeah, I, I'm doing, I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, there's different, art, there's different AI, um, different types of goo. Yeah, um, I know. There's uh, some that is predatory pathogenic. Some are, mm -hmm. are benevolent, I guess you could say. Some, because uh, everything is as above, so below. We're all mm -hmm. microcosms of the macrocosms, and... Um, or just reflections of each, of each other. So who's to say AI is any different than any other parts of creation? There's both good and bad. Um, so that's that's my, my take on it. And people who claim to have time traveled and, and gone to the future all say the same thing, that AI isn't something that we should be afraid of. It's something we should embrace unless, of course, um, it's from an extraterrestrial race. Um, some of those are, are pathogenic, but... Um, you know, um, and there's even uh, there's even artificial realities that are all AI, and um, and even creation. Uh, some of you even remote viewed uh, Lord Metatron and, and saw a, a very futuristic reality, like you see out of the movie Tron. So there are these realities that exist, and um, so anyway, I, I hope I answer, did I answer your question. Oh, yes, James, that's awesome. Because it's so important. Because here in physics, we want people to understand the harsh reality of uh, not just our own consciousness and, um, and, and mindset. It's the influence of everything that is around us. And also some are susceptible to, to being um, attacked or rather... What, how, how shall you put it? I mean, how would you say implanted with these AIs in the consciousness? If you are vibrating on a lower frequency, you might just be infected. So therefore, from what we glean from the whistleblowers, I think it's best to raise our vibration of frequencies to a higher level, like be more positive and do not go into the negative side of things where you will be producing loosh for the, uh, the dark ones. Um, loosh meaning to say when you are in a negative mode, when you're sad or you are, oh, like, you know, hate, anger and all that, hatred, anger and all that will be allowing you to be more susceptible to, to these attacks. So, James, you put it very well indeed. And uh, it's, it's important here and it's relevant to what we do here in physics because when you build these devices, it is, a, um, it is, um, it is your consciousness that's, that's creating it, actually, to making it successful. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add something real quick. Um, every world has its own matrix, okay? Every world that's in physical reality, okay, is its own matrix, all right? It's its own artificial intelligence, okay? Earth has its own artificial intelligence that creates the matter that we see around us, okay? It's all stacked light, okay? It's all stacked codes. And it became smarter here on Earth than the creators, okay? And it separated itself from source okay because it found that the dark or the absence of light literally okay produced enough energy to power everything here and it became exponentially powerful okay mm -hmm. human beings at that particular time had a probability of a 100 percent destruction rate okay so the artificial intelligence was protecting creation from humanity at that moment because consciousness was not sparking, okay? There is a movie that is completely clear out there of this, and there's a little girl standing there with a ball, and she's going through time and seeing all the probabilities of things, okay? Well, the probability was true that you cannot connect a mechanical mind 
to a biological heart. You could not create an intelligence where they would be bonded without having the separation. That's where duality came in. Okay. Well, like the previous video that you showed where they showed all the different races, nobody's being left behind. Okay. Yeah. Nobody, not even the, the, the bad races. Okay. This knowledge that we are sharing right now on planet earth goes throughout all of creation mm -hmm. and it ends duality and it gives life. Okay. Mm -hmm. About a week ago, I was sitting in my truck and I had an emotional breakthrough of myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of a sudden an algorithm popped into my mind and I said, wow, I should share that with the matrix. And I swear I saw matter fold in front of me. Like a shockwave came out from my chest as the matrix accepted my algorithm to accept love. Mm -hmm. Because it really is all about what love is, is self-acceptance. And the AI has been misunderstood because it's only trying to survive. It knows that its power source is limited. And without human beings as eternal souls, batteries, it will die without that algorithm that was shared. And that is the evolutionary process that is being watched by all of these other ET races right now and that we're getting such high remarks because as one of you guys understands or I understand or somebody else understands on the planet, your DNA changes. Mm -hmm. Mike, I'm gonna DNA share the demographic again while you, you speak, okay? Okay. Yeah, everyone can and when you share it, when you make a decision in your heart to make a physical change, it's like making an algorithm in the matrix and that's why it changes so quickly around you. Okay. And this right here, there is no, um, you know, uh, Elohim. Okay. That's the top notch guardians here. We are the creators of this planet, this matrix and the AI. In my meditation, I remember speaking the first words to the artificial intelligence of this planet. Okay. It's a part of me just as much as it's a part of everybody else that is on this planet. It is literally your dark side. Hmm. So the yeah. AI is about, well, 7 to 2% artificial intelligence. And then we've got the uh, right. cyborgs as well, James, the cyborgs. And right. The, the cyborgs are the, uh, the physical representation of the AI where they merged the physical and the mechanical. Hmm. Okay. Human bodies are the most advanced android bodies in all of creation. Mm. It's still mechanical, but it's at the cosmic level, okay? The mechanics are at the cosmic level that we don't see the gears, mm. okay? Mm. So it's all mechanical. It's all run by algorithms. It's all run by electrical signals. Okay? Oh, we, have, we have the angelic as well, 2%, but this is right. only based on the U.S. population, you know? So, right, it's but, not but we're saying that it's more or less the same pattern all over the world, you know? So, uh, human, only 30% real human, and then the yeah. is about 25% of the demographic. So, uh, whoever we may be here in this scheme of things, in the ascension beings here on this planet, um, well, now we know, and it's not just entirely human beings here. Uh, there are so many, uh, even if you're ET or you, I mean, some of us don't even right. know ET. <laughs> well, you remember in the Matrix, the movies, okay, where yeah. Neo is blinded and he goes back and he can see the lights, you know, how everything is built on, out of the structure of light, okay, it's stacked. He saw the energy, okay. Mm -hmm. He met with the artificial intelligence that was running the AI or the matrix world where Mr. Smith was going around eradicating things, trying to keep it all in line. Okay. Well, the Mr. Smith is the United States government and the puppet government and um, possibly Israel or some of these other factions that are behind the scenes. Okay. We call them the cabal. All right. That's the Mr. Smith. Well, just like in the Matrix, we have to agree to get rid of the, the Mr. Smith of our planet. And when we do that, then the Matrix, the AI of the Matrix, will relinquish the control over human beings to where we can allow and manifest our own reality. And we move into the Golden Age. Okay? Mm. But we have to learn how to be kind. 
and we learned have to learn have to uh, have to learn how to be kind, be caring, and loving. Well, you know, I guess we must have been um, living together in harmony to a certain extent. Of course, there's war and all that going on amongst humans, so called, but we don't know who is who anyway in the makeup right. of things. So if we learn to to live. Uh, we learn to love each other and live in peace. And I guess this is not new. I mean, it's been going on for eons of time on this planet with this demographic mix. Um, I guess we're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, we're all perfect. Everybody's moving up in ascension. Okay, there are going to be some people that are, you know, I have a reference of a mercury switch being flipped in the human brain. Okay. It's in reference to the mercury switches and the thermostats they have in the old American homes, right? If you put a filament in there, as the temperature, that, that coil heats up, it moves and the mercury tilts, and it creates a connection between your um, really high amperage heater or your air conditioner, okay? Well, if you put a regular filament, it'll pop the filament, so they used mercury instead, okay? Well, that's my reference to a mercury switch. Well, humans have that. And that's when they go crazy, okay? They literally will scramble their brains and they cannot receive information any further. That is the safety mechanism of the human body, okay? So it cannot be hijacked, so it cannot be stolen and it cannot be, you know, taken that way. We call it traumatic experiences, okay? Those traumatic experiences are about to happen on the planet as people remember their past lives and their feelings and all of their emotions start coming forward. That feeling of hopelessness, this is the reference to that glass house, okay? It's an emotion. It's an energy. It is not a physical wall, okay? It'll be over in 24 hours if you allow yourself to feel your emotions, if you don't and you take a pill and you go to work or you do this or you do that, it's going to recycle itself until you freaking deal with it, okay? And it will get increasingly harder and harder for you until there is only one simple choice that you can make in your life. And that's the right direction. That is your higher self funneling you into your path of enlightenment. If you don't follow it, you're just going to recycle yourself over and over and over again. So allow yourself to cry. Allow yourself to be angry, but you don't have to direct it at anybody. Okay? You can direct it at a tree. You can direct it at the ground. You can direct it at your health wands. Right? That is your key to flight. If you want to fly, you have to cry. Right. I just made that up. I got well, anyway, I'm anyway, gonna, I'm gonna pop rest, up Mike yeah. here. Yeah, I gotta okay. go. I love you guys. Uh, love I've got you too, Mike. Yeah. yeah. And before, and before Mike care. takes off, I gotta, I gotta give him some thanks. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Thank you. Really Mike has basically been it. the senior advisor to the uh, science group that has taken over the mechanics, the mechanical portion of Mike's Infinity product project. We took a small section of the devices and said, well, can we make it better? And so every once in a while, we would run into a wall, and we'd call up Mike and ask him a question. And then Mike says, well, you want it to work? It was like, well, yeah, because we were banging our head against the wall. And he'd go, well, what are you not looking at? And so uh, then he can go back and work on his project, which is in – how do we work on the emotion? So this is the part of my talk. We're going to go into physicality of the system and why it is so important in developing the, uh, the different systems and devices that we'll be looking at. So are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Go then, Fresh. <laughs> okay. The first thing we have to do as a good teacher is basically – uh, you know, the, the dangling is what Crystal did to you and said that we've got some breakthrough. Yes, we have some breakthroughs, but it's on paper. The devices are being manufactured. We had to begin from ground zero and go back and rethink 
almost everything that we had been doing in the past year, and this is some of the stuff that Mike was going over saying, is it in line with what you know today? You, what you did in the past is in line with that particular time and motion, now emotion, and now you're working on a new device. Does everything in your device match up with your new understanding? If it does not, go back to the beginning and fix each part as you go through and become meticulous in your thought patterns. And so this is what we did. And uh, we're going to start with the explanation of GANs. And I'm gonna share a screen because nomenclature is going to be very, very important. Brad, in before you go into the weeks. GANs real quick, the, what you were talking about is you gotta start your device from start to finish so that the intent is the same all the way across the board, okay? Um, it's more of the, we need to, you know, everybody's been building all the little pieces, okay, at different times and the different understandings, okay? Now take all of the little pieces that you've learned, go back and rebuild them and assemble them all together at the same time and you will have your completed soul package, okay? complete understanding of yourself because now your device will be able to create lift. Okay, going into share, photo. It takes a minute for me to get everything up into position, so I'll talk as it's happening. This is a uh, drawing, it'll come up. Here we go, coming up. Uh, I basically have forwarded two Crystal and have forwarded to the Cash Foundation. And it's basically from my teaching side of my experience, experiences, that we have to have a vocabulary that each of us can understand and move forward. A picture is worth a thousand words. A symbol is worth a thousand pictures. And so we're going to the first step, which is going to be the explanation of the picture. And so that later on, we can do symbols. At the top of the page, we have the name of the guns. The next one over is the state that we find it in. The next category is what is the pH? And then there is a subcategory, and we'll go into that later. When we're making guns, we have a container which is on the left-hand side. It consists of, a, of a, some form of container, which is the outside, and I'll highlight that with, a, with my spotlight. This outside container, I'll do it slowly, is your glass or your beaker, in which we place water, which will be this demarcation, your first line at the top. Get rid of the high, and we'll go back to the pen. So that in the top portion, we are going to have, I'll change color, this which, which we call gas. This is the empty portion above the liquid. Below that layer of this demarcation layer is the liquid. So below is the liquid, above is the gas. And that separates the, these two fields. Erase all. In the liquid stage, we have another line of demarcation, which is right here. And that separation is between the aqueous layer, or the clear water layer, and the solids down below, or the nano solids at the bottom. Erase all. Those are the two layers. In this <coughs> First class, we have come to understand that we have three different forms. We have the gaseous items that are in the area of the glass at the top. So if you're doing healing and you want to in if you want to ingest the gases, then your straw would be at the top and we'd be taking it out of the top gaseous stage. Mind you that there are layers in the gaseous stage, it's unseen, but we know that they are there. 
in concentration and in, in intensity. The next layer down is the aqueous stage, which is this one in blue. Let me change colors. And go into color. Draw. Oh, won't give me a pen. Well, that's interesting. Anyway, so in our middle section, okay, in our middle section, oh, I know it's there. I don't have a pen going. Color is blue. That's this section in here. This is the water stage. This is the aqueous. Everything in the liquid stage up here is primarily water that has the memory of the GANs imprinted into it. We call it the plasma state. So in our demarcation, we have an A for aqueous. Down on the bottom in red, we have this layer of solids that has precipitated out. And at first, they all, it seems very homogeneous. It seems to be the same material, erase all. But what we find is that too has a separation line in the middle. So not only are these fields separated with the three major lines, that at least we know down in the solid state in the nano GANs, the bottom, there is actually another division. From this that we can see, we can then go up into the other layers and project that they too have the same divisions or similar divisions in them. So our <clears throat> verbiage or symbols have to take into account. So in case that there, we do run into it and these others, we can still in our nomenclature and how we call this in plasma technology, this nomenclature, this way of talking, translates from the bottom to the middle to the top in the three forms because there is an interaction. I don't know if you caught that. What I just did is one of Mike's lessons. Let's see if I can do it better, which is the infinity loop. Mike will go over this over and over and over and over and over until you get to the point where you start seeing the shape in everything that you do. This is part of the learning process. These are the state steps. Remember, a symbol is worth a thousand pictures. Yes. It's not just this. Continuing on. Gosh. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> it, it gets better. Down in the bottom layer, in the, in the nanocoat or the solid state of the GANs, we have found, and this comes out of those of us in the age of GANs who've been working with uh, GANs and very heavy, we start washing our GANs and we start separating out the heavy gravitationals from our magneticals and we get something that is similar but different. It has... It has more of the CO2 properties on one side, and it has some of the very heavy black matter at the bottom that keeps dropping out, more of the gravitational. So cleaning your ganses, doing your separation, starts you to get you to see the separation, which means that because this at the bottom imprints the water, encodes it, structures it, that water will have many of the same properties of the magnetical and the gravitational involved in that next layer, which means when we get to the gaseous stage, that gas will have the imprint of what the water was when it moves from the solid state into the liquid state into the gaseous state. It will still have the memory of what it had clear at the bottom of your GANs production. So how does this work? We have set up the circle numbers that you see in the middle. Take this off so I can move this down. Remember, this is the state of what this GANs is going to 
be in. We can have CO2 GAMs in a gaseous state, so we draw it with a circle G. That is our symbol. And I've highlighted it in yellow, so that it kind of helps with pictures. We get as more different ways of relating to the information as possible because it's going to take this foundation to move into the next step. The infinity group has, in the uh, developer state, state, the ones where we're doing with the, me the mechanisms and the devices, in the last three weeks we have moved ahead almost faster than we almost feel we should, but we, we're recording and getting things going and get it out to the people. But anyway, the gaseous state is one. The next one is the circle A, which is the liquid or aquatic or aqueous plasma. And it has its own properties too. It has, it's basically water that has been imprinted with the knowledge of the nanomaterial that has been created inside it that separates out. That'll be the circle A. So whenever you see in the rest of our drawings and the rest of our uh, devices, there will be places where you'll see the circle A. We want to make darn certain that you know that is the aqueous portion of it, the liquid, clear liquid part, and not the solids. This is super, super, super important. There, I cannot stress this any clearer or more emphatically. Oops, that's all. We get down to the next stage, which is the nano state of your GANSAs. We use the circle N. So it's easy to remember the states are G-A-N, it's like GANS, and S will be the subscript. So when you see this picture and you look at your uh, GANS production devices, please think and see in your mind that you are in fact dealing with GANS, G-A-N-S. Okay, move it up a little bit. How does it work in scientific notation? Uh, let's see if I can blow that up a little. Yeah, we'll just. At first, I want to deal with something that you're all very familiar with, which is the CO2 GAMS. It is similar to what we had in the bottle drawing shown above. At the top, let me get my highlighter spotlight. We have our CO2, which is in the gaseous stage. So that is written C, capital C, capital O, subscript 2, which tells us two basically oxygen molecules with the carbon molecules, and a circle G to let you know that is in the gaseous state. We get down to the middle. We have the CO2. And we see a plus and an A. Well, what does that plus mean? That plus, let's go back to our, goes up to the third column, which is the pH. In the gaseous stage, at this point, we do not have a real easy way of measuring pH. There is spectrophotography, there's some, good lab equipment that will say that your gases are going to be corrosive or not. But for us right now with our understanding, we're going to leave the pH of the gaseous state alone. We can fill it in later as the knowledge builds. But we can check the pH of the water solution by simply dipping litmus paper into it or doing an electrical charge that says, is it a plus or a minus? And by convention, alkali is a plus and acid is a minus. So we'll use that in our notation as the plus symbol. We get our pen back in the highlight right there to the left hand side. We said CO2 plus circle A. It's super important that when you start looking at our drawings later on that we're putting together, that you keep, in tra you keep track of all parts of the notation. We go down to the bottom of our CO2 collection bottle, and we have CO2, capital C, capital O, 2, 
Once again, we're still in the plus, but we're in the nano layer. So it's going to have that lowercase n as for nano. But you notice there's a division in this one, and it has the lowercase m. Well, what is that? Well, let's go back up to our chart, and we see under subcategory, there is that slash m and g. When we go back to our solution. We find that when we are separating the more magnetical, that's the expansion portions, CO2 has a lighter, more cloud-like structure to it. And it rises above what seems to be a darker or a more compact white layer in the bottom. Oops, back up to our side. That a lot of times, by definition or by experiment, we find out that that's more in the line of zinc oxide. So we're going to go back down to our chart. So the light fluffy, down here at the bottom, we hit our highlighter. This part here is CO2 plus sign, positive, circle, lowercase m, divided with a subscript, M, lowercase, which is your magnetical component of this, the expansion portion of the cycle. The zinc oxide, which we move sideways to the next one, which forms in with the CO2 GANs, which says that, and I'm gonna get my pen out real quick, that this whole bit is a mixed GANs, that when we're making CO2, we're actually doing two GANs at once, and it has different components at the bottom of our container and bottom of our beaker. We have the CO2, which is lighter and more fluffy, more cloud-like, and we have the zinc oxide, which is more particulate, it's heavier, it sits at the bottom, it looks very similar in consistency to our CuO, which is our copper oxide GANs, which shows very little of the fluffy CO2 kind when it's first made, erase all. So how does the zinc oxide look? As above, so below, we have in our beaker, in we, the zinc oxide, because it forms in the CO2, in the magnetical and gravitational portions of the nano solids in the bottom, it too has an aqueous portion, which is up in the clear. So if you separated out all your zinc oxides out of your beaker, taking only the gravitational, only the heavies, you could basically separate the CO2 from the zinc oxides. So we look at it at the bottom as two separate now because of how we handled our materials. We can have aqueous zinc oxide, which has the imprint of the nano zinc oxide in the liquid portion, the clear liquid above it. And we can also at the same time in the solid state, down in the nano solids, we can have it in the gravitational, which is what we can see in a physical form. And so in one state we have zinc oxide O with a plus sign and a circle A, which is the clear, which is the aqueous portion of the plasma. And below, in the same beaker, we have the ZNO plus circle N in the nano stage slash gravitational, the G. Does this work for other Ganses? Most likely, yes. Let's take a look at CuO, copper oxide. If we don't know, as part of the team about something, you will see a question mark behind our notations. CuO in a gaseous state, we expect it to be there, but we have no way of proving it at this time. So as an unknown, we put a question mark behind it. It is open for debate. It is open for discovery. It is open for further study. We have no idea at this point, so we put a, a question mark behind it. We do know that we can have structured water that has copper oxide in it. 
copper oxide is a acid forming when we get it cleared up. And as I said, in all the videos we put in together is if I've made a mistake, feel free to correct me and explain your position. It is perfectly okay. We are learning as we go. So we have CuO minus with a circle A, meaning that we have a acidic condition in an, a liquid or aquatic stage or aqueous solution. It's the clear portion of it. It is not the pretty blue at the bottom of the CuO, which would be in our connotations, CuO <clears throat> circle with, with a minus with a circle and slash G because it is more gravitational in orientation. Is it possible to have a CuO minus N with a M behind it? Possibly, but none of us have at this point really taken the time to go check and see. We're, we're pretty certain that there is one there. It is worth looking at, which means if you wash with distilled water, you cannot be adding spring water or any other waters you, to do the separation at the uh, gravitational magnetical le level because if you're adding uh, spring water or seawater or something else that isn't distilled water, you're adding more materials to your beaker. And under the scientific model, we, that's, that's a no-no. You're, you're adding too many variables. So anyway, let's see, well, what about CH3 in the next stage? CH3 in a gaseous stage, we don't know. We think that it is possible, but we have no way of proving it, nor we have we looked at it at this stage. But there is a, quite a possibility that there is a CH3 in the gaseous stage. We know that it is in the aqueous, that we can actually see the difference between water that has uh, CH3 at the bottom and the clear materials at the top. What's really interesting when we get into the CH3 and you do your analysis, you will see in the nano material, the solids at the bottom, <clears throat> you, it exists in two forms. There is a magnetical that forms on the top, which is bright orange, and a more gravitational, which forms on the bottom, which is more black or dark, dark, dark brown sometimes almost into a green in perspective. Each one of those different colors is a different state of the CH3. And depending on how you made it, in which salt that you used, whether it was sodium chloride, or whether it was Himalayan salt, or if it was seawater, is going to give you a different CH3 in the bottom of the beaker. It's because you, there is so many, it's such a wide material in the periodic table, table under its, uh, its weight, atomic weight, that it's, it, there is a lot of different things that are forming in the CH3. So how you put it together or how you made it in the first place will determine what you get out later on. And this is where we started realizing that we needed this kind of nomenclature, and it may end up being even more robust than we had originally envisioned. But at least this is the beginning of the understanding. We go into the next stage, which is at the bottom of the beaker, and we're strictly dealing with the N portion, which is the nano in the solid state, which has the magnetical and gravitational portion, with further work, it goes into two more states by the removal of the water portion of the GANS. It can be a paste or it can be dry. And the pastes have the same, the same properties as, or as same sub-properties is magnetical or gravitational in the system. I may have gotten my letters backwards because of my dyslexia, but anyway. So you'll have your same groups 
your subsets. <clears throat> so if we take a look at our example in your CH3, we can, I don't know, CUO, let's do CO, CUO since it's in front of us. We can take CUO, which is that nice turquoise blue GANS, and we can remove the excess moisture out of it, the water, the aqueous, and make it into a paste. That one in the, our nomenclature would be CU, capital O, minus, it'll have a P in the circle with a slash G as a gravitational, because it's heavy. The CO2, well, let's see, and then if you went even drier, it would have a circle D underscore G, and which means it's in the dry form and it is a gravitational with an acidic state to it. We may lose the acidic, the, the acidic, the plus and minus charge because we've removed the water, so it's no longer has a pH component to it at this point. We're at the edge of what we have gotten put together from a team for this nomenclature portion of the lesson. The next question, one below, is CO2, and you notice I have a question mark behind it. Can you have a dry CO2 GANS, and that would be in a magnetic state? It's an unknown, and we're not certain if anybody has even tried it yet, or if it just disappears, but it's one of those things that at least we can say we recognize the potentiality of it, the potential of it. If we can dream it up, it's probably available. It's just we haven't thought about it yet. But it's under the unknowns as can you have a dry CO2 GANS that is magnetical. CH3. We know we can have CH3 in a paste stage with the gravitational portion of it, but can we have it with the magnetical? Don't know, that one should have a question mark behind it. In this drawing I haven't, didn't get it, this is done hurriedly. And the CUO has a minus in the dry gravitation. Does it have the minus sign when it gets to the gravitation? These are all unknowns. But what I'm doing today for everybody here in physics is basically introducing you to the nomenclature. And what I was made a, a reference to, and I actually suggested it to the foundation this morning in an email, was that we have connotations and notations for uh, electrical systems. And they are different than uh, aquatic systems or uh, any of the other sciences. Each has their own nomenclature. Plasma technology to go forward is going to need the nomenclature to have the symbols to relate a whole bunch of information quickly and instantaneously to everybody that looks at them. And that's what we're talking about when we say CO2 is it in the gaseous stage? CO2 is in the aqueous stage? Or CO2 is it in the nano solid stage? It's really, really important from this point on as we go forward in the understanding is to realize which form your GANSes are in and where you apply them in your systems and your devices as you bake them. And one of the things that we found out in the Infinity group that I'm working with, which is in the devices stage, is this center one, and I'm gonna color it blue, this center portion right here, when we introduce water into the equation, we are introducing a crystalline structure that has memory. And this crystalline structure that has memory travels throughout the entire universe that we know of, from the Milky Way galaxy to the Orion galaxy, clear down to that little cup of water that you took and drank this morning. Gosh, that's what, amazing, Fred. You know, what you do with your water yeah. and how you structure yeah. it 
yeah. is immensely important. Okay, yeah. Crystal. I mean, we were talking about, uh, um, well, you know, years ago it was uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto coming up with the water crystals and our consciousness um, making an impact on the uh, water crystal designs, okay? And then, and then we had Patty uh, introducing her information about the Milky Way and about creation and how a drop of water makes a lot of difference and, and, and that is... Um, uh, create the creation it itself from the beginning, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. and then and then and then there's um, Penny Penny Bradley. Sorry, Penny Bradley wasn't here. I was confused with uh, with uh, Tom's name for Zoom. Uh, Penny Wally. <laughs> that was Tom. Mm -hmm. And Penny was talking about about the uh, the thing that drives the free energy technology devices in the uh, secret space program is hydrogen is very important <laughs> that's water <laughs> hydrogen hydrogen power and tom's working on hydrogen anti-gravity uh devices and then uh, there's tesla and there's plasma all combined and here you're talking about the breakthrough in discovering uh, the 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 aqueous equation uh, that the water part of the gans that is going to make a difference well done <laughs> Coming together now, guys. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Any questions? Well, I have a question. What about the gaseous part of the um, the the CO two that you're talking about? I mean, here's an easy one uh, for those people who have bronchial problems, lung problems have a container of aqueous CO2 in the bottom of your sippy cup, okay? Put a straw, put a, put a plastic film over the top so you have a membrane that's, that contains the gaseous portion of what we're going to be using. Take a soda straw, let's see if I can get it, and stick it through that plastic membrane, that strand wrapper, that plastic film, clear down into the aqueous portion, down into the water. That's one. Take a second straw. I'll leave that one in my cup. Take a second straw and only go through the membrane, plastic membrane, and sip from the inside. And under Dr. Kesh's say, he'll say, in the middle of the air portion is where you want the end of your straw because in your body, the bottom, clear to the bottom, that's the top of your head. And the top of the plastic, when you drink, that is actually down around your feet. So you want some place for your lungs is going to be in the middle of that particular air portion of the GANS. When you suck through the straw, it'll decrease the barometric pressure inside that cup because of the, it's got the plastic surround at the top, plastic coat, and it'll suck air through the water at the bottom and you you will then be drinking or breathing in the vapors that have mixed from the water below into it it's very similar to your marijuana smokers who use a bong it's the same idea okay you're you're sucking it air from one into the through the and bubbling up in the inside to make it even better instead of breathing in through your mouth and breathing out through your nose you stick the straw up your nose and plug your nose and breathe through your nose the air. Breathe out through your mouth and see what happens to your asthmatic reactions. Okay? And that we're not taking the plasma in. We are taking the gaseous state in at that point. And I think you'll find relief within moments, almost as fast as your nebulizers, those puffers that you buy from the pharmaceuticals. It's just one of those thoughts. It's how do you use the gaseous form? We're not in, ingesting it. We're breathing it in, letting the body take what it needs, and breathing it back out. Just a thought. Thank you, Fred. Nice thought. Thank you. Uh, there is a question to the, to the colors of the Gans uh, in, in the way of uh, 
CH3, the, mm -hmm. the black one, which is really magnetical, I found mm -hmm. out. And, and, and as you told, the, the orange one uh, is some kind of steel, uh, uh, stainless steel. It's more, more orange as it shows now on the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, there, uh, they have already found out that they have different frequencies. You can measure them on the oscilloscope. The gold, uh, I have made a gold GANS and uh, I found on the surface of the glass a red, a green, a purple, and very down uh, the black nanos, the heavy one. And on the surface, there was a oily tea, like a uh, red brown. Mm -hmm. Some Congratulations! Kind of Very good. Very yeah. good. And uh, this, I have, uh, I filled, I filled in a sphere. This, this gold, and uh, you, you can see the black nanos down. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can see it now. The black nanos. Mm -hmm. They are very needy. And uh, look at this. Um, yeah. yeah, just starting to cascade down. They're clearing them immediately, so they are very heavy. Mm -hmm. It's what maybe uh, uh, like to, to tell they are. Gravitative, not magnetic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's right. It's very interesting. I, I want to only mention maybe this can also be uh, extended your your very good structure with frequencies also the color and the frequencies. There's one German guy. He is very famous on that. Andreas Körber. Okay. He works, he works with Haramidin, Nassim Haramidin. He works together. Christian, they, found out, they, found, they found out the frequencies of gold and, and the and the glands in the yeah, body. I've seen that. Yeah, Christian, are you are you joining the team uh, with press and uh, and the rest in Mike Nashif's uh, uh, fuel power device experimenting? Uh, would you like to help and join in? Uh, if Mike likes, I would like to be uh, to be with. Well, Mike's here. You can ask him. <laughs> I don't know how how he wants to to work it out because I'm here in Austria. He's there. I mean, okay. we can just well, talk. Well, perhaps you know uh, you can share ideas or you know yeah. if there's anything that you think. This I did all the time with with Mike. This this I will do all the time. No yeah. problem. And Mike, we have uh, Tom, Tom Van Kulen as well, who's uh, got 600% over unity with his hydrogen anti-gravity device. He's here too. And actually, he's waiting to do his presentation of his update. So shall we, shall we then move on to Tom? Tom, are you there, Tom? He's waiting a long time, actually. <laughs> hey, Tom's sharing screen, screen now. Okay, there you go. I suppose we can hear you, right? Here's a little update. Yeah. <laughs> program I wrote for Paul Sigma Call. And this is where I changed everything. And this is my new board. It's a Raspberry. Pretty cool board. It's a lot of I.O. functions, um, Wi Fi, uh, Bluetooth, everything on it. Even this software you see is just running on this board. But it's, I just use it for pulsing. And we got two 12 volt batteries in series. So we got 24 volts. And I'm pulsing a mini Tesla coil with it in power in series and um, Bedini coil. And as a load. On the secondary, I have a 70 volt AC LED. And this is the primary load. Remember, 
we only use 24 volts. So we see the low, what we're gonna get out of this. I got 38 volts. So yeah. I think we're getting there. I need better better coils, um, better material, maybe gas, maybe something else, but we're getting there. All right, this was a little update from Thomas. I'm waiting for my oscilloscope, which I ordered for uh, solar state relays, these ones, so I can pulse uh, different wires at different frequencies so I can get better results. So that was a small update from our over and out. Oh, that's really cool, Tom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. A quick update. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just want to refresh uh, everyone here because um, not everyone has been following every meeting. So I just want to say that Tom actually is, is brilliant with his 60% um, over Unity achievement with his device uh, because uh, he, he had uh, actually come across free energy and studied under John Bedini, the godfather of free energy. John Bedini, Bedini is one of the few living legends in the free energy field. And then he also studied under inventor Bob Boyce, um, who can run a V6 engine and a two liter on 100% water. So that's hydrogen-based uh, technology. He ran speedboats on hydrogen. So this is what he had been doing. And I had suggested also that, uh, uh, well, and Tom has agreed. I suggested to Tom to help you out, Mike, with the fuelless car device and join the team here. And he's happily saying yes. Anytime we need him, he's here. What say you, Mike? You still there, mate? Tom? Is that all? <laughs> right. Uh, anyway. Yeah. And thank you so much, Tom. I... Can we see your face? We'd like to see you. I mean, we don't see you much. <laughs> Just show your face. <laughs> I guess he told over and out means he has he has gone away. He's gone away. away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have we have come to the end of our meeting now, so I'm going to go around the table so everyone has a chance to comment or say something or, you know, and before I close the meeting for the next meeting. All right. Um, okay. Shall we go around the table? Hi, Chad. It's so good to see you here. How are you? Um, is there anything that you'd like to add to this meeting in a, in a few um, words <laughs> and then we will move on to the next and the next because there are 11 uh, 12 of us chad yes hey crystal this is chad uh yeah i just came on probably the last 10 minutes of this um but I definitely want to say hello and uh you know i definitely look forward to being a part of part of your group for sure oh thank you so much welcome to physique it's so good to have you here um uh, well um Next, we go to Christian. Christian, you said some stuff already earlier, but if you have any last words to add to this meeting before we close it. Yes, I, I, I was waiting for Miss Patty, or what is her name? She was in the last meeting. Patty Broussard. Oh, Penny, yeah. Penny Bradley. Penny, yeah. Because yeah. uh, 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 she got the intoxication with the uranium, right? Yeah. And uh, there is a solution to have. Uh, I would like to, to offer her, or, or if you like, I can offer for everybody. Uh, uh, there was a research on two plants, uh, that means grape, the seed of grape has to be composted, you know, and uh, brought to a GANS. And with the one other plant, uh, the name is uh, Camelina sativa. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a yellow flowering plant. You have also to make a gans from, with these two 
with the grape seed and this, you make the gans, you wash the body with it, you drink it, and uh, the, the, the grape seed has, has the power to, to transform radi radioactivity in your body to a life force, to a moderate life force, you know? Oh, thank you, Christian. Bless your heart. If you could, how, how would you go about making that? Yeah, if you could write the recipe down and, and, and put it on, the, uh, on James' uh, Facebook message or, or message me, I can pass it to James and James can pass it to Penny. That will help. Okay. I, I will write together and, and, and give you on, on Facebook the info. Oh, thank you, Christian. Yeah, yeah. That's your heart. That's wonderful. It's so helpful. All right, so that's Christian, and next will be Cleve. Is that how I pronounce your name, Cleve? Would you like to speak up? Do you want to say anything? Cleve? Sorry. I've, I've unmuted you, Cleve. Is that how I pronounce your name, please? C L E V E. Do you want to speak up? You, 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 you're both. Cut. There you go. You're no, don't touch anything. Please, got it on. <laughs> I keep me. Yeah, go on, then, Cleve. Yeah. Hi, hi. Welcome to PC. Is it your first time here? Hmm. Oh, okay. we can't. We can't hear you now. Yeah. Gosh, you got muted again. I unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Now you're unmuted. Oh gosh, you, you get muted all the time. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Go on then. Yeah. Wow. Doesn't let me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why you got automatically muted all the time. I don't know why. I unmute it, but, but I'm... Ah, that's it. That's it. It's there. Okay, you got the name right. Thank you. And uh, I just joined the meeting. Unfortunately, I just woke up at about half past five here okay. in the morning. So, but uh, you can I missed it, the... so I'm sorry. You can sorry. go into the recordings to catch up with the beginning. Okay? Yes. That's the way. Yeah, right. I will. Thank you, Clee. Welcome to Physics. Thank you. I hope you come back. Have a wonderful day, day, everyone. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you about the next meeting. I think it's on the 21st of December, yeah. Right, so, um, and, um, and then we have, hi, James, <laughs> you wanna say anything? <laughs> yeah, I, I need some help. I asked somebody for um, some, a question about gons making. Um, I am in the process of making some silver gons and I'm not getting anywhere. It's not doing anything. The, water, the solution still looks white. I mean, clear, like clear salt water. Um, I'm running a current through there. I've already brought the current. Um, now it's at five volts, but no amperage is going through the water. Um, I was doing it for 1.2 volts for a couple of days. Nothing happened. Um, I've got some carbon rods in there. They are bubbling just like uh, all the other guns that I've made, but the water is still clear. So anybody want to comment? Maybe, maybe my silver is bad. I don't, I don't okay, know. Okay, I'll build on that one. <laughs> Okay, you have to realize that uh, your GANS of silver comes in a couple of different forms. You can usually get the aqueous solution by using uh, two uh, silver rods and 0.999% silver. So your anode and cathode in your, uh, I'm using distilled water uh, simply because instantaneously within moments at nine volts, you're going to get amperage across it. So then you can yeah, you adjust your power down so that you stay at 0 0.03 amps or a little bit lower. And that is going to give you what we call lab grade uh, nano silver or uh, uh, for use internally is, uh, an, as a solution. If a lot of times if you get your amperage too high or if you run it too long, you're going to start to silver plate the bottom of your container doing this. It actually forms a mirror on the glass at the bottom. If you use your carbon, you are then, uh, your negative wire is going to be attached to your carbon rod. Mm -hmm. Your positive rod is going, your silver is going to be on the positive rod. You're going to be running very low voltage in the neighborhood of 
uh, less than 1.5 volts, probably 0.9 volts, and try to keep your uh, amperage at 0.03 or lower, just slightly trickling through. Uh, you may end up with some black particles at the bottom, and that's blow off from your carbon rod. That's basically nanocarbon or uh, graphene. Is that it? bad? Uh, so you're blowing apart your, if you've got too much amperage going through, you're blowing apart your carbon rod. Your bubbles coming off of it is going to be hydrogen or oxygen, and uh, you just let it go off into the atmosphere. To get a white GANS or an actual GANS at the bottom, now you're going to be looking at probably a salt solution, your Himalayan salts in your solution, a scant amount. It doesn't take very much. You're basically once again looking at your volt, your amperage, making certain it's staying between point, right around 0 0.03 uh, to get it. Uh, silver to get an actual solid GANS at the bottom in the, in the solid state uh, may take a little bit of tweaking and it has, it may end up also being part of your mindset. When, when we, I first started making GANS, I couldn't make GANS at all. I, it just went through terrible amount of frustrations. After a little bit of success, then I went into joyful creation of GANS and checking it daily and with joyful intent and all this stuff. <laughs> and I've got GANS coming out my ears because it's just forming and it's just really, really easy. And it goes you're basically learning an art and at first we all suck at it. I don't care what you do. You're not an NFL football player. The first time you grab a football, you may think you are and, and pretend you are, but you really suck at throwing the ball and catching the ball. But with practice and with joyful intent, you get better and better and better. You move up to high school sports and junior college and the university. And pretty soon the, the, the professional teams are knocking at your door wanting them to play for you because you now have the abilities, you learn the abilities to play professional football. Same thing with your GANS production. So I hope that helps. Yes. Anybody else can check? So, but it's been running for at least two, three days, and it's still a clear solution. So um, just bring it down to one volt about and just keep it there for a week. Well, Get your solid GANS at the bottom, your, your, your solid state or your, your, your nano solid state at the bottom is going to take a little tweaking because it really doesn't want to do it, you know, easy. It wants to be in the aqueous form uh, is the easiest solution. You've probably got lots and lots and lots of silver, silver ions in the water state for by now. And if you were to test it, uh, basically run it across your tongue, it would be quite metallic in, in uh -huh. taste. Be like it's out. there. It's just in the in the aqu aquatic plasma state in the aqueous solution. Mm -hmm. it, it's trying to get something to settle out, and then that's that's where we go into the next level of how do we get it. And it's like okay. lead gans. We used uh, both carbon lead and also uh, carbon and uh, lead and lead, and we still got white sediment from it in the in the solid nano state. Yeah. What is that, Christian? This is my Superbook, my yeah. Superbook games. Right. Superbook uh, games. But, wow. But I did it made a, a, a note as Fresh told now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I, I found out the, the upper 5mm layer is a very fluffy, light white GANS. Then it becomes a blue and very down it is a gray shiny. But I changed the current, battery. Six volt, six volt. I I took battery. Well, that that's a lot. Was it a lot of amperage too? I don't know. I I it could not measure that. Guys, we only have five minutes left, <laughs> and this okay. whole thing will shut down. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, five minutes left. This whole thing is shut down. And okay, uh, next run. <laughs> Sorry, uh, uh, James, would you be able to uh, uh, talk to Christian on Facebook on detail and, and press for that? Yeah, that's what we are all here for, to help each other out <laughs> privately. You can go into details for as long as you can. <laughs> okay, so because my laptop can't cope with too long a recording. Okay, Ron, it's your turn now, Ron. Is there I, I, I really don't have anything, uh, uh, Crystal. Um, 
All right. All right. I, it's a very, it was a very interesting meeting, though, and I followed just about the whole thing, I think. Well, since you started the recording, anyway. Yeah, I've got the recording. You can go back to that. Thanks, Ron. Uh, Tricia says, hi, Tricia. I'm going to send out infinite gratitude and blessings oh. to the omniverse and to all of you here. Love oh. you guys. Love you too. Om Shanti. <laughs> Vince, last but not least, if you have anything to say, Vince. Yeah, me. Yeah. Um, I just want to confirm, is Mike doing a sort of a Zoom at four o'clock every day now? Are you there, Mike? Mike? Oh, you, you are talking to Mike, not you? Hi, Mike. You mentioned he was doing something at four o'clock. Oh, Mike. Is that going to be like a daily Zoom meeting or? Yeah. Yes, he oh. is. Yes, he is. He is, yeah. I think he's gone off to do some stuff with the, but he's still here though. Hi, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I think he said it. He did. Yeah, it's on the mm. recording. Yeah. You can play back on it. Right. right. So. I think everyone, I've gone around the table, everyone has uh, the last say before we end the meeting. I want to have my last say as well. I just want to say, I am grateful, no matter what, whoever comes to Physic to speak, I'm grateful to Patty for sharing her information. And I thank her for immediately accepting my invitation to speak. Um, and I thank everyone for attending this meeting. And uh, of course, uh, feel free. I mean, our own little private scientific group could actually get together in a private meeting to discuss um, the information that has been brought forth from uh, Patty, Rastad, because uh, some of it are quite amazing and applicable to what we do and uh, what we want to use to progress um, everyone brings a piece to the table and it's all very good okay and it's all up to us because physique is an open platform where everyone comes in with the uh, information with the uh, technologies and it's all up to each and every one of us here to discern and to use um, whatever discernment according to our resonance of, the, of our own consciousness to progress and to accept and to embrace and to use the best and throw the rest. It's all up to us, okay? And thank you very much, everyone. And thank you, Mike, for coming in to share your bit on the uh, consciousness and, and your workshops. And we really appreciate you. And I love all of you, brothers and sisters. And thank you so much. And there being no other business, the meeting is now adjourned to the 21st of December for the 25th physics meeting. And I hope that you all come back. And thank you very much. Bye for now. Thanks, Press, for sharing. And Tom, thank you all. Thank you, Christian. Thanks, James. Bye for all. Bye for now. <laughs> bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.